are here to celebrate a number of things. Number one, uh, bike patrols are coming back. So we're starting with those fellas over there with the bikes. Uh, it's summer and staffing is just barely adequate enough where uh, we can bring back bike patrols again. We started redoing that uh, in my second year and then COVID, we had all sorts of challenges so we didn't really do it during COVID, but it is back. And so look on next door on our public places for when those patrols are gonna happen and where they're gonna be, but they are happening throughout the city. And of course, in areas like downtown and Knob Hill and along the railroad tracks and I-40 corridor, uh, as well as I-25 to Rio Grande. So sort of in the central area here. Now, additionally, these officers are also uh, gonna increase their patrols in key areas like Knob Hill and downtown. Okay, now normally, of course, uh, today would be celebrating bike to work day. So in true COVID spirit, uh, I'm not sure who thought of it, but it was a great idea, bike to anywhere. We're just celebrating biking uh, because not all of us are working anywhere. So, um, you know, it, that we have to bike to. I have talked to a lot of people who like have traded off. They're like, oh, I bike more because I'm home more and I can do biking. And then others are like, I bike a lot less because I'm not biking to work. And so it's all kind of shifting in flux, but biking is good. It is healthy, it's fun, and uh, it's wonderful for the environment. So also uh, with Bike to Work Anywhere Day, we're having, of course, just our official proclamation, which um, is unique this year because instead of Bike to Work Day, it does say Bike to Anywhere Day. So very cool. And so today, officially, uh, as mayor, I do hereby declare today Bike to Anywhere Day. So let's round of applause for that. Oh, wherever day, not anywhere. You are correct. Yes. If, if only I just read it right there, bike to wherever day or on my shirt. Thank you. Now, and as part of bike to anywhere day, uh, you can now take the uh, this trail, right? The North Diversion Trail all the way to the Bloom Fiesta without hitting a stop. And uh, I'm sure Councilor Benton's already done that. He'll walk us through the details. But remember this for Bloom Fiesta. This is by far the best way to experience the Bloom Fiesta is to bike there. And of course there is bike valet and things like this. And so it's a really cool thing to do to so avoid you know, the giant traffic mess that always occurs. Now, other related thing is the connection between biking and transit. So we have a bus behind us for a reason. One, it's got our Vision Zero uh, sort of uh, public awareness on it. We'll talk about Vision Zero next but also we're demoing how to put your bike on the bus. So there's a lot of um, questions and a lot of people are like, well, that, that last mile from getting from my house to a bus stop is the hardest sort of piece in transit connection. And so we, we really, the best way to do that is actually to ride your bike and then put your bike on the bus. And all our buses are now uh, well outfitted and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So let me mention a little bit about Vision Zero. There are folks who don't know about Vision Zero uh, Vision Zero is a commitment we made to, you know, it's aspirational, but to have zero pedestrian fatalities. And it has to do with the intersection of education, also of built environment in terms of how we do things. Uh, and also, of course, uh, basics around, um, you know, the connection between bicycling or walking and driving and sort of where you're at in the city. And so even driver's awareness and things like this. So it's from blind curves to sidewalks to awareness and to this. So going under the street is a huge nod to pedestrian safety. And so we're continuing our commitment to Vision Zero. And I think what I'm gonna do is our coordinator that is gonna speak a little bit more about sort of that engineering plus design. It's also about safe speeds and the sort of policies and regulations that I know actually Councillor Benton is also very passionate about this. And so the other speakers, I'll let them kind of touch on this in a little bit more detail. Uh, and sort of the slang is it's about walking and rolling. So that's the nod to cycling. So there's a little bit of a call to action to today. We want to make sure that we uh, remember to respect all road users, all road users. And now, you know, whether it's the era when we had scooters, who knows if those are coming back uh, and or it's cycling. Uh, or it's even uh, folks in different modes of transportation. Uh, we have to respect all users of the road. It also means following the speed limit. We've talked a lot uh, about the speeding challenges we're having in our city coming out of COVID. And uh, there are some uh, good tactical plans that APD has announced to try and work on that. 
But some of us, is, it's also remembering that speeding kills. And so this is the program that uh, we're now doing through PSAs and so forth to remind everyone that speeding literally takes innocent lives. And so uh, it's also on us to remember that we shouldn't speed. It's not just about enforcement. It's actually, uh, we have to take on that responsibility as well. Okay, so lastly, uh, to achieve our climate change goals, we also have our sustainability officer here, uh, Kelsey Rader. And uh, you know, anytime you can walk or bike, it helps all our targets for climate change. And lastly, of course, uh, we wanna remember everyone, not only do you need to drive sober, but also cycle sober, because uh, that sometimes can be a very problematic issue as well. Yeah, going to the balloon fiesta. We have to get up early in the morning anyway. Why not just get the proper lights so front and rear on your bike and head out? And uh, what a way to go to balloon fiesta. Um, uh, I wanted to make a quick thank you to a person who's not here, and that's former County Commissioner Maggie Hart Stubbins, who was a, uh, a big advocate for finishing this final gap in the in the trail here uh, at the high canal and um, so um, yeah just a thanks thanks out to her and you know we she and I have done did so many so much great work working together with the community here when we saved the golf course and things like that so really want to give a shout out to her anyway getting off topic um, so yeah uh, independence for Young people, I think, is another important part of this discussion about making our city bike friendly. Um, I think we're an incredibly bike friendly city. I would love to, Mayor, you know, uh, it seems like there's an opportunity for bike related tourism that goes beyond what we're doing now. I know that there's some people doing you put that money already. in the budget for that. <laughs> we'll find it. There is. There is. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, this kind of tourism. You know, when you look at, at, at uh, our city, where we excel is our uh, geography and our weather and our open space. So um, it's really, it's a great way to experience it as a tourist. I, uh, I went on a great bike tour a couple of years ago, uh, three weeks and just self-guided. And it was really, really inspiring. Um, but also I want to thank Mayor Keller and this administration for their commitment to Vision Zero and to complete streets, which is something that we started prior to the Keller administration, but it's really picked up steam and it's really showing some accomplishments. Uh, complete streets is, is really about when we rehab a roadway, let's really look at it carefully and try to make it best for everybody. Even if we don't have the big bucks to build a new roadway, you know, let's try to get that bike lane in if we can, let's try to get street trees in if we can, all of that kind of thing. So that's such a, such a great, uh, We've seen great results from that. And when you compare that with Vision Zero, um, this is the way our city will be a safe cycling city going long into the future. So uh, I appreciate that. And um, yeah, just congratulations for everyone involved. Can't wait to get on the trail. Glad to be here today as a Vision Zero partner. Um, we understand that transit is a crucial component of keeping our city connected and helping make our, making our streets calmer and safer. Uh, we really pride ourselves in moving people around our city, getting them to their destination, whether they're going to work, appointments, services, it doesn't matter. We want to get them there safely. Uh, we look forward to continuing to collaborate with Vision Zero to increase the well-being in our metro area and to increase mobility for citizens in the city. So thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Kelsey Rader, and I'm the Sustainability Officer for the City of Albuquerque. Uh, today's launch of the 2040 Vision Zero plan deepens the work of ensuring safe and expanded opportunities for walkers and cyclists across our city. As Mayor mentioned, uh, cycling and walking is a huge asset to climate change mitigation. Over 40% of Albuquerque's greenhouse gas emissions come from transportation, and the majority of those emissions comes from the cars that we drive every day. By improving and slowing down traffic, um, improving cyclist and pedestrian safety, we can lower our carbon footprint while also improving our air quality and contributing to our personal health. During the development of the city's most recent climate action plan, the public reiterated the importance of taking action to improve transportation, including the input of over 3,000 residents who shared how they, how they would like to get around the city and what they'd like to see improved. From these 3,000 residents, the overwhelming majority reported they wanted they were primarily used cars to get around, but they wanted to see safer sidewalks and bike lanes, 
reduce traffic speed, and more con connectivity among bike and pedestrian infrastructure. As the Climate Action Task Force deliberated on these calls from the public, they finalized strategies to focus on improving the safety and accessibility of biking and pedestrian infrastructure, especially in our city's most vulnerable neighborhoods. The efforts carried out by the Vision Zero campaign are excellent examples of how the city is taking immediate action to create a more sustainable transportation future. This new bike notch addresses infrastructure needs to increase cycling connectivity that communities across the city have asked to see. The new 2040 Vision Zero plan is also vital in deeply addressing the calls to change, for change from, from residents to keep us safe, as well as pave the way for ensuring a healthier way to move around our city. Thank you so much to Tara Reed, to the Vision Zero Task Force for leading on this important work. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tara Reed, and I'm the Vision Zero coordinator for the city of Albuquerque. As someone who regularly bikes, walks, and takes transit, I count myself very lucky to get, the, get to do this work as part of my job. I wanna start by acknowledging some of the partners that we have that make this work possible because we can't, none of us can do it alone. Um, I wanna thank of course Mayor Keller and Councillor Benton for their leadership um, and their, their commitment to sustainability and improving tra transportation safety um, and advocating for active transportation. I also wanna thank my colleagues at the many different city departments that we've worked with um, over the past two years to develop the Vision Zero Action Plan. Um, so many departments have come together to see why transportation safety um, is really part of what we do, um, our collective work as a city. Um, we also have some really great agency partners, including the Mid-Region Council of Governments, Albuquerque Public Schools, New Mexico Department of Transportation, and Bernalillo County, who are helping us make this effort um, part of our whole community. And last, I wanna give, um, this is kind of a long list, but I really wanna shout out all of the community partners that we have um, doing really important work. And a lot of these organizations have been doing this work much longer than I have, or than we have as a city. Um, and I'm really grateful to get to learn and work with them. So um, just to name, not even all of the organizations, but some of the ones that I get to work with regularly, the International District Healthy Communities Coalition, the Health Equity Council, the Healthy Here Initiative, Presbyterian Community Health, Together for Brothers, the Borellis Community Coalition, the Wilderness Society, Bike ABQ, Albuquerque Ciclo Via, and um, our friends at the Greater Albuquerque Bic Bicycling Advisory Committee um, who do great work at the city. And I'm really in in encouraged to get to work with all of these um, great advocates. And since we're here celebrating Bike to Wherever Day, um, I wanna give a shout out to the folks who've helped us organize this day, some of whom are here, thank you guys, um, as well as the volunteers who've been out um, counting people biking and walking around the city this week and last week. Um, it's really important for us to have those, those folks and get everyone involved. So as we move toward implementing the Vision Zero Action Plan, we'll continue to collaborate and grow our community partnerships because we all have a role to play in making our streets safer. The Vision Zero Action Plan is really, the mayor talked about, right, this holistic approach that we want to take to traffic safety. Um, and that starts with working with our community partners. Um, it also involves um, really working with data and understanding what areas of our city are most dangerous for people and where people are um, out using our streets, where the people out using our streets are the most vulnerable. So especially people walking, biking and taking transit, but also protecting folks who are driving um, and getting around in other ways as well. The mayor mentioned that speed is a really big issue for us right now. Um, the faster the cars are going, the, the more severe a crash will be if it occurs and the more dangerous our roads become for everyone. And this is a, the way that we're addressing safety and through speed, safety through speed, um, is, is an example of this holistic approach, right? Um, we are looking at designing our roadways to sort of self-enforce and slow people down. Um, we also wanna raise the awareness and visibility of efforts like Vision Zero and the Look For Me campaign, which is on the bus behind us, um, and just let everyone know why it's so important to slow down. And then using data to really understand where we, where we can make the biggest improvements um, and investments in our community. It's a heavy lift to eliminate traffic deaths and serious injuries, but it's incredibly important work, and I'm grateful to have such, diverse and such a diverse and engaged group of partners implementing this Vision Zero action plan that we're coming out with today. Thank you very much. Okay, all right, I think we're ready for our little uh, bike through christening thing. All right.